What are the five fundamental concepts you should know about the Serial UART bus? Well, here they are in under three minutes. Hey there, this is Kevin McEwen and this is WCL Talks Tech. If you're new to this channel, this is where we cover smart product development beyond Arduino. Think ARM Cortex and RISC-V. We do quick three-minute videos that give you the basics on any topic, and we also do deep dives with full projects you can replicate at home or office. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's jump into the video. All right, serial communication also referred to as UART, which stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, which definitely is a mouthful. And what this communication is used for uh, is very common to use this type of communication to have a microcontroller on a board talk back to your computer so that you can do print line and those types of things. But it's also possible for a microcontroller to communicate with uh, some other sensor and these sensors don't have SPI or I2C, they just have a simple serial interface to do that communication. So here we have a microcontroller, and let's say here we have a temperature sensor, and the way we're gonna communicate is via two lines between the devices. Now, we only need one line if, for example, we're only reading data and we're not sending data. But in this example, I'm going to put both in here just to be more complete. So the microcontroller um, is going to transmit on a TX line and receive, I'll call it on an RX line. And that means the data is going this way and this way, which means that we basically have full duplex communication capability. So we can be transmitting and receiving data at the same time. Now, the interesting thing is when we, when we connect these devices or connect these pins together, we don't connect TX to TX and RX to RX. Uh, you do that with things like SDA to SDA for I2C or MISO to MISO for SPI, where they're always consistent. With UART, you have to cross them. So the transmit line here is gonna go to the receive line here and the transmit on the temperature sensor is gonna to go to the receive line here. So that's a gotcha sometimes when you're breadboarding is that you forget to do that and your, your serial communication doesn't work because they haven't uh, been swapped. Now, another thing to consider when we do this is if we wanted to add a humidity sensor, which was also basically a serial communication, we cannot tie off these lines like we would with I2C and SPI. We actually have to use two new lines on the microcontroller. And so the thing to keep in mind is as we continue to add devices that are serial, we end up having to use two more lines each time to the new device. And that means that these lines grow linearly with the number of serial sensors that you're communicating with, which is very expensive. It's also the case that it is not um, possible typically to have that many serial ports managed in hardware by the microcontroller. The final thing to consider is that there's no clock line. So, you know, normally we would have some kind of SCK line or something like that. Since that does not exist, the actual frequency of communication between the sensor and the microcontroller has to be determined ahead of time. And that's where you'll see commonly, okay, I'm gonna set something to 9600 baud. And as long as you do that on both the transmitter and the receiver, your communication is good. But those need to be determined ahead of time. 